Hello, my name's Matt. I'm part of Ulverston Parish Church. This is our service of morning prayer for Sunday the 19th of July. It's really good to have you with us. I hope you're well. I hope you've had a good week. Over the last couple of months in our services, we've been asking the question, where is God in all of this? A question I'm sure many people across the world have been asking in these strange, unprecedented times as they've become known. We've been looking at different Bible characters, seeing how they have responded to difficult situations. And in this service, we're going to be looking at Mary, the mother of Jesus, thinking about the way that she trusted God amidst so much uncertainty. Before we get started, please make sure you're comfortable, get rid of any distractions, give yourself this half an hour to focus on God, focus on the important things. Just take time to let God speak to you through the words of this service. Let's just take a moment now to be still, to be quiet, to be peaceful, try and find that stillness as we come before God. All the words and responses that you'll need should appear on the screen at the relevant points. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray together. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. We're now going to have our first song, which Rachel is going to lead and play for us.
as one week ends and another week begins. It's good just to take a moment to think about the week that has passed, to consider the times when we didn't act as we should have done, times where we should have spoken up or times when we should have been quiet. We have a God who loves to forgive, loves to wipe the slate clean for us. So let's come to God now, our loving Father, in a time of confession. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin, turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our two Bible readings, and then after that, Hannah is going to speak to us. The reading today is from Job, chapter 19, verse 21 to 27. Have pity on me, my friends, have pity, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? Oh, that my words were recorded, that they were written on a scroll, that they were inscribed with an iron tool on lead or engraved in rock forever. I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes, I and not another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's reading comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be man married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his word and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, you have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning to you all. I wonder how you've been coping with the horrendous effects of COVID-19. Today, as we continue with our series, Where is God in all this? We're going to spend some time looking at Mary, the mother of Jesus to learn something of the way in which she trusted God through her incredibly tough times. Life has obviously been dramatically changed by this global pandemic. 
we weren't expecting it. It's hit us for six. There's been an awful lot of struggle and pain and death, and we've no idea when or if it will disappear. Life was uncertain and tough before coronavirus came along, but now even more so. We're not at all certain of the future, and even those who are supposedly in the know aren't sure either. So it can leave us feeling a bit lost, unsure how to move on, helpless, even scared. How do we deal with this? Mary, too, in her day, had an enormous amount of uncertainty to deal with. How did she deal with it? Well, as we've heard from our gospel reading today, Mary, this very young woman, betrothed to a man, not married, is told by an archangel, no less, that she will have a baby. That given the amount of scandal and shame and rejection and overwhelming that she would have had ahead of her due to the culture and society of her day, it would have been very understandable for her to say no, don't you think? But she is a woman of great faith and says yes, because as a servant of God, she wants to do his will. She knew that her life was going to change drastically and she had no idea how her family and her community and her betrothed would react. Yet she knew that God would never change and would not reject her. Mary must have trusted God already, but I can imagine that her sense of trust grew in leaps and bounds as she began to realise and accept the greatness of what was to come. Yet she didn't know exactly what was to come. God may have said that she was going to have a baby, but he hadn't given her any other information. I think I'd be calling Gabriel back asking, is that it? Anything else to say? During life, <clears throat> we find hardships, big and small, and we have no idea how things are going to play out, how they're going to resolve or not resolve. And sometimes they seem to us to resolve for the worse and we can't understand why. That's when this trust thing really comes in, isn't it? It seems natural for us to want to know how things are going to work out. We want to know details and have clarity about the situations in our lives. I read a conversation documented in a book by the renowned ethicist John Kavanagh. He tells of a time in his life when he went to Calcutta to work for three months at the Caligat House for the Dying. His experience was part of his heartfelt search for direction about his future. The first morning there, he met Mother Teresa and she asked, what can I do for you? Kavanagh asked her to pray for him. What do you want me to pray for? She asked. He responded by explaining that he had come thousands of miles from the US to find direction. Pray that I have clarity. She said firmly, no, I will not do that. When asked why, she said, clarity is the last thing you are clinging to and must let go of. Kavanagh commented that Mother Teresa always seemed to have the clarity that he longed for. She laughed and said, I have never had clarity. What I have always had is trust. So I will pray that you trust God. Constantly seeking clarity can actually strip us of a day by day, moment by moment dependence on God. There's a deeper intimacy to be had in trusting that God is sovereign and has this under control. When we are doubting this, the Bible tells us to walk in the spirit and follow Jesus. This is much easier when things are going well, obviously, but when things are tough, not so much. It's a greater test. But scripture says that we can and we should trust at all times. I read this on the internet this week. Often when uncertainty strikes, we throw aside our yes and run miles ahead into the land of what if. We let go of God and grasped onto things that give us a full sense of security, but not Mary. Mary loved God enough to trust that all that was required of her was the next one step, not the next hundred miles. She could be blindly obedient because she loved him more than she loved her plan. I love that last bit. She loved him 
more than she loved her plan. Mary is a wonderful example of submission. She puts her life into God's hands, completely trusting that if she says yes to what he asks, that all will be well. And I think Carol Hauslander, a religious artist and writer, sums this up beautifully when she writes about Mary. Mary said yes for the human race. Each one of us must echo that yes for our lives. We are all asked if we will surrender what we are, our humanity, our flesh and blood to the Holy Spirit and allow Christ to fill the emptiness formed by the particular shape of our life. The surrender that is asked of us includes complete and absolute trust. It must be like Mary's surrender, without condition and without reservation. If we trust someone, we believe that they are who they say they are and that they'll do what they'll say they'll do. Like Mary, we can trust God because we can know who he is. And looking back, we can know that he does what he says he's going to do. His ways are unexplainable sometimes, but we can look back and know that he has orchestrated and overcome situations for good throughout history and in our own lives. Hindsight really is a wonderful thing. Another incredibly significant event in Mary's life is the death of her son. When we think of Mary at the crucifixion of Jesus, we don't need to be a mother to grasp some of the pain that she would have been feeling. She's known in some parts of the church as the mother of sorrows. Personally, it's agony to think of anything happening to one of my children. Mary felt her own pain, but also must have felt a huge sadness for the world, having thought that Jesus was to be the world's saviour. But to her, it didn't look much like saving, watching him die on the cross. She'd been told early on in Jesus' life that a sword would pierce her heart, but she didn't know how. This woman really knew pain. She could have fallen apart at that point and given up on God. Yet we read in Acts later that she's together with the disciples, praying constantly prior to Pentecost. So despite going through the unimaginable, Mary has kept her faith and trusted that God knows better. As the proverb says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. If we were to think of others in the Bible who go through a lot of struggle and uncertainty, we could find many. Um, but an obvious example is that of Job. <clears throat> He's put through a huge amount of suffering, much more than, than any person could stand, I think. But he remains faithful to the God who he believes remains faithful to him. Despite the life-shattering disaster all around him, Job doesn't give up on God and says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. Like Mary and Job, we can trust in the height of uncertainty and bad times. In fact, sometimes it's in those bad times that we are drawn to God. When we're in the middle of a storm, that's when we look for help. And as Charles Spurgeon, the 19th century Baptist preacher, said, I have learned to kiss the wave that slams me into the rock of ages. When adversity comes, God has given us an open invitation to come and find comfort and peace in him. We can certainly learn from and be inspired by Mary's story. She leaned on God's word and kept going, trusting his leading. Mary's desire and her decision to serve God was greater than her own fears and uncertainties. In our suffering, God wants us to fully depend and lean on him. And if we rely on the Holy Spirit in all things, instead of our own strength and understanding, then he will be able to guide and carry and sustain us through times of adversity. During this time of a global pandemic and throughout our own personal struggles, as Mary submitted to God and literally conceived Jesus in her, so we can surrender our ways to and trust the one who lives in us and promises to love us and never leave us. 
And to conclude, we can turn to one of the last verses of today's gospel reading, which says, For no word from God will ever fail. Amen. Thank you, Hannah. We're now going to say the creed together. The creed is a statement of belief. It's a statement of what we as followers of Jesus believe to be true. It's based on words that are hundreds of years old and it's going to be spoken today by Christians across the world. So let's say this together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. But on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we're going to have a time of prayer. Hello everyone, let's join together in prayer. And when I say the words God of love, I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for human rights to be honoured and for all people everywhere to be respected, regardless of race or class, and for the relief of the oppressed. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray that you would renew us in faith, in love and in service. And we pray particularly at this time for the restoration of our economy and the resourcing of our public services and for all people to prosper in their daily life and work. And we give you thanks for human skill and creativity and all that reveals your glory and your grace. God of love, hear our prayer. We pray for those in need, for the sick, the sorrowful, the anxious and the bereaved, especially for those known to us personally. And we pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing, that you would give them compassion and strength. We thank you for human love and friendship and all that enriches our daily lives. God of love, hear our prayer. When difficult decisions come our way, help us to hear your voice and willingly obey you, trusting that you will guide and strengthen us. And in doing your will, may we be a blessing to others and grow in knowledge and love of you. God of love, hear our prayer. Let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours 
now and for ever. Amen. We have another song to sing now, so do join in at home. I'm going to hand over to Rachel to lead us. I hope you've enjoyed this service. I hope that the words that you've heard would have spoken to you, spoken into your heart. Maybe they've challenged you or inspired you. I hope 
that this service will help you to trust more in God. If you're new to faith or you've got questions or you want to know more about us and what we do at Ulverston Parish Church, we'd love to hear from you. We have a website, ulverstonparishchurch.org, or you can also find us on Facebook if you just search for Ulverston Parish Church. We're going to finish with the words of the grace. Let's say this together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.